Hi, today we're going to talk about cholesteatoma. Before we can tell you what cholesteatoma is, you need to understand how the ear works. This is a drawing of the ear. The way the ear works is, sound comes in, hits the eardrum, goes through the three bones of hearing. The third bone of hearing interfaces with the hearing organ called the cochlea. Within the cochlea, there are little receptor cells that receive the sound, turn it into a nerve signal, send the message to the brain. There is a tube called the eustachian tube that connects your nose to your ear. That can get blocked, and when that get block, gets blocked, a vacuum can form in here, and that vacuum sucks in your eardrum. The eardrum has three layers. It has the outer layer, which is skin, the inner layer, which is a lining like your mouth and your nose, and a middle layer that is a fibrous layer. That fibrous layer is missing right here in the eardrum, and what happens is, is the eardrum gets sucked in, and it gets sucked in more and more and more. So the inside of this area that is sucked in is lined with skin. Skin everywhere in your body sheds. On your head, we call it dandruff. It falls off the rest of your body. In your ear, when you get a cyst or this little sucked in area of your eardrum filled with dead skin, it is a cholesteatoma. Why does that matter? This can continue to grow and it can erode into a lot of the vital structures that are in this area. It can erode into your ear bones, and so oftentimes, the most common symptom is hearing loss. Another symptom of this is, is what happens is, is, is this, this inverted skin here has the dead skin. The dead skin gets infected, it drains, it empties out, and then it starts filling up again. So people will oftentimes have an infection, and then a period without infection, and then another infection over and over again. If this is left unaddressed, it can extend into other vital structures. It can go into your balance canals, it can go into your hearing organ, it can go into the, the nerve that moves the muscles of your face, and it can go into your brain. So this is not something we want to have around, so when we talk about it, we talk about managing this. Unfortunately, medicines don't work for this, and this is a surgical disease that needs an intervention to be resolved. In order to resolve this, we need to remove it. So what happens is, is you have a surgery. It's a general anesthesia, outpatient surgery. Typically, patients go home. There's a C-shaped cut made behind your ear. Going under the skin, over the muscle, there's a fibrous tissue right here on the muscle, and that's what's used to reinforce and rebuild your eardrum. Working through the mastoid bone in this area and through the ear canal, the cholesteatoma, which is right here, is removed. The eardrum patch is put in place to rebuild the eardrum. If the bones of hearing were invaded, they will be replaced with an artificial bone, and then the entire reconstruction will be filled with packing. A dissolvable packing will be put here in the middle ear where the ear bones are, and here in the ear canal. This enables the patch in the eardrum to heal in place. Sometimes the cholesteatoma is very extensive and the bottom of the ear needs to be scraped. If we scrape the bottom of the ear here, you have a raw surface, and you have a raw surface from the patch that we took here to put the eardrum. If you put two raw surfaces together in the body, there's a tendency for scar to develop. And what can happen is, is the whole ear will fill with scar. This is not a good way for you to hear because a brick of scar does not conduct sound very well for you to be able to hear. To prevent that, what happens is, a piece of plastic is put into your ear here. It, it prevents the scarring between the two areas. If a piece of plastic is put in, that typically necessitates a second operation approximately six months down the road to remove the plastic, put um, a new artificial bone of hearing in, and rebuild your hearing mechanism and make sure that the cholesteatoma is not present. We will not know until the first operation whether or not you need a second operation and that would be discussed in the post-operative period. The surgery itself, you go home that day, pain is typically controlled with ibuprofen and you're under the weather for a few days. If you have any questions or concerns or issues with a cholesteatoma, please feel free to contact us to discuss it further or make an appointment. Thank you.